Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I am out exploring uh, with my daughter. We're just taking a quick break um, and I uh, was going to make a quick video. And I want to do, uh, well, the topic of this video is going to be about communicating with your kids and when they ask questions about it. I actually asked my daughter, you know, what would be some advice that would have been better even for me in communicating with her on it? And and she had some really great points, and I thought I would share those with you guys today. You know, the thing is, is that it's a really fine balance on how you deal with this, right? On how you, how you do that. And the biggest thing is, it's important to be honest, but you have to be honest in a way to where you're not lashing out, getting angry, and getting really frustrated at... Uh, at the X in the situation. It's like you have to come up with a, a realistic, or not a realistic, but a reasonable response. And one of the problems is, is, is it depends on, hopefully things don't start blowing away here. It depends on, on, the, on how the question is. I remember one time my daughter had asked me, and I think I talked about this before, but she'd asked me, you know, what happened and what was the deal? And you got to keep in mind that a lot of times people don't really understand, especially if they're in the middle of it, they don't understand both sides of the story, right? Or they mind a little bit, but it's the, the important part is, is that you don't get angry. And one of the things that I did the last time that this, this happened with me is I did actually, you know, I kind of tapped into that anger. I kind of tapped into those emotions and feelings and allowed myself to kind of kind of lose control a little bit. And that's what you don't want to do. You want to be 100% reasonable and calm and rational in the conversation. And anything beyond that doesn't help you, doesn't help the communications and doesn't help your relationship with your kid. So the important part is to catch yourself on that and if you find yourself going down that road, to stop. And in that situation, the situation I was just, was just talking about, that's exactly what I should have done. I should have paused uh, when she wasn't getting it, just say, well, you know, it's complicated and you know, we can talk more about it later and left it. Um, it's, it's really tough because you know, you're kind of stuck in, in this mode, well, not mode, but you're stuck in this thing trying to to figure out how to articulate it, how to communicate it, how to get the point across and the emotions across, and oftentimes it's a it's a really it's a really complicated thing to do. You definitely don't want to lie or sugarcoat what's going on with with the other parent. You know you don't. Again, it's a fine line, right? Because you don't want to talk bad about the other person, but at the same time, you don't want to feed into your child's own cognitive dissonance, where it's like, oh, there's, you know, your mom's fine or your dad's fine. You know, they love you in their own way or whatever. I mean, you, you, you got to be honest about the, the bullet points of it. And what I, would, what I would recommend and encourage you to do is to sit down before this happens, right? Before you get into the situation and write some bullet points on how you would communicate the situation to somebody who doesn't know, whether it's your kid or just anybody. Because everybody's, a lot of people are gonna fall into that same camp. I mean, if they're, if they're completely on your team, like if someone's completely on team Dwayne, then it's really super easy for them to believe you. But if somebody's neutral, or if somebody doesn't see that there's a big problem, you know, or God forbid they're on team X, then you have to be incredibly measured about how you communicate it. And, and not allow the emotions part of it to really grab onto you and, and run away with it. This is a really tough situation. And it's really hard with your kids because they love both parents. They love you, even if they pretend like they don't sometimes, they do. They love the other parent. They don't wanna think that someone's evil. They don't understand. Oftentimes they'll be like, well, this is silly. Why, why can't, you know, why can't you guys just get along? Why can't it go back the way it was? And it's, it's super tough. 
And most people who don't, haven't been through it are still gonna have that same type of experience, or same type of reaction. They're gonna be like, you know, well, you're blowing it out of proportion. You know, you're, you, know, you guys just need to communicate. You need to do this, that, or the other. Tell you one thing, it does get easier when your kids get older. When, they, when your kids are older and, and starting to mature to where they understand a little bit more about what's appropriate and inappropriate behaviors, they've had their own per, interpersonal experiences with their friends, maybe even with the other parent, so that they, they are feeling some of those same emotions. Let me just say this though, do not be the one to tell the other per, your child that the other parent or that their parent has a personality disorder, that you're diagnosing them, that uh, they have this problem. Talk in really broad terms. You do absolutely do not want to be the person to say, you know, your, you know, your parent, you know, your mom is a uh, suspected uh, NPD, probably comorbid with borderline, you know, part of the duck triad. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> That's a surefire way for it to blow up in your own face. Let me turn my. Let's see if I could get the exposure better. Um, it, it's, it's, y y all of this is based on having open communication. And what I will tell you is if you're doing okay and you're doing good with your kid, more than likely if they're asking questions like that, that means you're building the graphs, building, building the gap? No, building the relationship. So don't blow it by, by going off the deep end and, uh, you know, your other parent is Satan. You know, don't do that. <laughs> Just be very measured, calm, you know, and uh, it's, it's really tough. And you're going to have to deal with this in, in like in a real time way and be, be quickly analyzing the situation, the conversation, measuring how it's going and then picking the right response. What I would also recommend you do have a very short conversation. Don't have a long, multi-minute, you know, 10, 20 minute conversation. Have a quick conversation, hit the points, move on to something else. Because your kid's gonna be uncomfortable about having the conversation and you don't want to, let me back up. And they're not necessarily gonna be in a situation, more than likely, where your kid's gonna say, okay, that's enough, let's move on to a different topic. Don't expect your child to to control the conversation. You're the adult, you're the one who's gonna be controlling it. You need to measure what's going on. You need to limit it to a short duration, hit a couple of bullet points like I was talking about earlier, and then say, okay, you know, we can talk about this more later if you want to, just ask me later, and pivot the conversation to something different. Hope that's helpful. Uh, it's kind of nice to get some uh, feedback from my daughter on this. I mean, as my kids get older, I. I have an opportunity not to say I'm, I have this YouTube channel, you know, just say, hey, what can I have done? What can I what could I have done better? You know, what what would have made things easier for you? And to be honest, I think that's not a bad conversation to have with your kids as they get older, not 10, you know, well, it depends. You're gonna have to be the personal personal gauge on that. But because oftentimes if you, they're too young and they don't understand. They'll just say, well, why can't you and mommy just co co communicate? Why can't you and daddy just have a conversation? And, and at that point, they're, they're too immature and they don't understand enough to, to really understand the context. As they get older though, not a bad question. Not a, good con not a bad conversation starter to be able to start a conversation about this topic and then have them give you feedback on what you could have done better. And then you can also think about that going forward and what you, how you could deal with them going forward better. So I'm curious if anyone else has been dealing with this. You know, I know people who are early in the process, this is way too early to be talking about this, especially if you have young kids, but probably some of the other people who've been on the channel for a while and, and who have older kids might be able to relate to this and, and might have some uh, opinions. Put those in the comments below. I'd love to read those and I think it'd be helpful for other people. If you know someone who could benefit from this, share this video with them. If you're new to the channel, please like the video, subscribe, hit the bell notification so YouTube tells you everything. And I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to do some more exploring. All right, talk to you later, guys. Bye.